Uh, Professor Pisaritas, thank you very much for joining us today. The consensus in financial markets is that a Greek default is just a matter of time. What's your view? I can't see any, I can't see how there could be a consensus really about the Greek situ situation because it's so fluid. Uh, it, it default could be avoided and then the word default means many, many things. It could mean an extension of some uh, maturities of debt. It could mean a uh, literal default where you just don't pay. Uh, it could mean a restructuring of the debt. So just to say default is um, consensus is a little bit meaningless if I might say so. Now the um, uh, <coughs> debt of Portugal was downgraded to junk by one of the uh, credit rating companies yesterday. Mm. This again uh, led to a fairly rough day in the markets for the uh, more indebted peripheral countries. Are we now entering a more dangerous phase of the debt crisis? We, we're, we're, we're entering a more critical phase because n now the important decisions have to be made. How the uh, debt will be financed over the next uh, three or four years at least until the European stability mechanism is in, is in place and until we see how it works. So there is a lot more uncertainty in the market because of, of, of these uh, negotiations going on now. Um, if they are uh, successful and if the new mechanisms uh, work, then um, I don't see any problems with the uh, debt in the medium to long term. If they don't, we'll be in trouble. Now, European leaders appear to, again, be behind the curve in fighting the debt crisis. Why haven't they managed to find the, the right recipe? They, they, they're behind the curve because they first one. I mean, you can't really blame them that uh, they didn't anticipate something that uh, had never happened before. Uh, it, it's easy to be wise with hindsight and say we should have known that these things could have happened. And, and, and it's true, you know, looking back, it's not too surprising that they happen now, but uh, it, it doesn't work like that usually. So they, they're trying to catch up. They've, they've, they haven't been uh, totally successful so far. They haven't been unsuccessful either because things are still working in Europe. You know, the economy hasn't uh, collapsed. Uh, there haven't been defaults. Um, it, it, partly because th there isn't really a, a strong experience to guide us in uh, how you uh, deal with 20, a union of 27 countries when there, there aren't any central uh, fiscal institutions. Now, the European Central Bank has made some controversial decisions in its um, management of the crisis. What marks would you give the ECB and its president for the, the role it's played? I, I, I'll, give it, I'll give it high marks, actually, because uh, the role of the European Central Bank is to control inflation and um, manage the euro. And I think they've both been successful. Inflation is very low. Of course, we have a recession that helps, but uh, it's still possible to have inflation in recession, as we saw in the uh, previous recessions. And don't forget that when the euro was first introduced, it was depreciating against the dollar, and it went drop below the dollar. And everyone was saying, you know, we told you it was a disaster having the euro. Look what's happening. And look at it now where it is. And again, they're saying there's something wrong with the euro, which, is, which I, I think is all nonsense. It's a well-managed currency and inflation is low and that's the role of the central bank. If, if things get worse for Greece, if uh, the uh, rating companies do place Greece officially in default or a selective default, what will the ECB be able to do uh, to keep the Greek banks in business? Now, if, uh, I mean, not, not so much if the agencies place Greece in default, but if, I mean, if we look at the hypothetical case where there is a, a, a serious restructuring, serious haircut or serious default, then um, I, I, I mo most banks, if not all, are, would be able to absorb that. If uh, they don't, then the obvious thing is that the ECB will have to provide uh, more liquidity for the banks uh, to see them through any initial uh, liquidity shortages because now there might be Greek bonds that they're holding that they're considering liquid. Their price in the market is so low anyway that they're probably not relying on those bonds now for liquidity, but the, uh, the answer is a kind of liquidity rescue. Yeah. You've praised the ECB's overall handling of the economy since the uh, arrival of the euro. There's an ECB meeting tomorrow, uh, widely expected to uh, intre increase interest rates once again. Uh, will that be the right thing to do or a mistake? 
It, yes and no. I'm, I'm more in favor of um, not doing anything to uh, monetary policy for a while at least because we're, we're not seeing any firm signs of recovery in the Europe as a whole that um, could endanger inflation. Um, uh, true, Germany and some of the smaller countries are recovering, but if you look at the European economy as a whole, you don't see any sort of solid recovery that's really taken hold, and, and you certainly don't see any inflationary signs. So, uh, given that what the ECB should be doing is controlling inflation, I think they can afford to wait a little bit longer to um, make it easier for countries like uh, Greece, Portugal and the uh, periphery that uh, are going deeper into recession because of these debt problems. Mm -hmm. um, Luke, the crisis demonstrated what a lot of people knew or thought they knew, that the euro is not uh, an optimal uh, currency area. What's your judgment of the reforms that the EU has undertaken uh, to improve the management of things? In, uh, in, so, I mean, so, so far the reforms that I have taken are uh, are good in the sense that they work. It's true, Europe was it's not an optimal currency area, but there were many other factors that uh, made, that made the euro uh, a, a good policy to follow, despite the fact that on pure economic criteria it, it was not an optimal currency area. Uh, it, it's fair enough. What they have to do is to find the solution to the to the fiscal problem, fiscal coordination between the countries, because what we knew or should have known and what we are seeing now is that um, fiscal policy and fiscal coordination are as important as monetary policy and monetary coordination in making a, a currency and the currency union work. Um, as Europe comes out of this crisis, where do you see its uh, growth potential? How depressed has it been by the crisis and what effect will this have on the level of interest rates as the, as the economy recovers? I see when, 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 when the economy recovers and when we have um, uh, firm institutions in place to, uh, to run, as I was saying just before, the, the, the fiscal policy and, and more coordination, more f free trade, I, I, I see Europe coming out of this recession and growing uh, fast again by the standards of a mature economy. I'm not talking about Chinese uh, the type of, of growth. And, um, and where I see um, happening is, um, is partly in high net worth uh, manufacturing that uh, could be exported, but mainly in the provision of services. That's where I see uh, jobs growth in Europe. Now, when that happens, then obviously interest rates will, will go up and, uh, and, and possibly inflation might go up to 2%, 2.5%, you know, the, the sort of rates at which we got used to before. But, it, but interest rates, there is no reason, and I certainly don't expect interest rates to jump above the levels we had before, sort of 4 to 5 percent as a kind of uh, average rate over, over a growing economy uh, longer term. I, I, I don't agree with people who say that uh, uh, the, the European economy would never recover and will always be in deep trouble after these experiences. I think these are problems that, uh, that can be solved, and there seems to be a lot of resolve to solve them. So compared to previous cycles, the interest rate peak will be about the same or lower? Or? I, I, I can't see any reason why it, should be, uh, um, why it shouldn't be the, uh, the same. Um, if you take a more global view, there will be a lot more demand for capitals and savings uh, worldwide. And then to find out where interest rates will be, really, you, you probably have to look more what's happening outside Europe than in Europe. Um, you know, let me give you a scenario, for example, there is a strong encouragement in China to spend more. Not if it would be good for China to spend more domestically and not save as much, but if that happens, then it wouldn't surprise me if I see interest rates going up a little bit higher because there would be an increase in the international demand for capital uh, beyond what can be supplied with the massive saving that the Chinese are doing now. That's the kind of thing that we have to look at to see where interest rates are going.